today is kind of an exciting morning because uh, we're opening the store in 30 minutes or so and we basically have almost nothing baked. Uh, like just enough time to load the ovens right now. It's a little more than 30 minutes, like 40, 40 minutes. Uh, we have a tray of everything that we make basically baked off late last night just in case we don't make it on time as a backup. But everything else that's going out this morning is not even in the oven yet. So we're just playing with this model of basically baking as people come in um, and pick up really hot bread. Uh, it's a challenging model, but it's kind of what we're just aspiring to be from this location. So, you know, you can get bread from a lot of places you can get our bread from a lot of places and we get it there as quickly as humanly possible but here our ovens and our sales counter are inches away from one another so we're trying to really kind of push that to the limit uh, and having a good time doing it so today also is a first though because we are opening up the location to uh, coffee service basically the only coffee that I drink at home uh, is made by a roaster that supplies our grocery store next door, Main Street Harvest. Uh, and that roaster's name's Lab Notes Coffee. Uh, another small Mesa business. Met Luke uh, at our local farmer's market uh, here in, in Mesa. Uh, he joined pretty early on, so we helped kind of launch that, relaunch that Saturday market after many years of it sort of not being around. We've gotten to know each other over the last few years and I like what he's about. The whole like concept of his is focused on telling the stories of the farms that uh, grow the coffee beans, um, which he sources directly. And it's just a great coffee. We're gonna be serving that today for the first time. So it's a little bit nerve wracking too to see how it all goes. Basically kind of activating new parts of the store that weren't activated until this morning um, such as having like plates and uh, and cups for people that want to stay here meanwhile there's a lot to do around here and so like this morning would not be at all anxiety ridden if we had the right amount of hands to do the work but as it stands like we should already be uh, at the other oven loading bread and there should be another person in the front of the house helping set up the store uh, so you know we'll get there little by little that's kind of just the the symptom of growing into a space like this uh, from what we were doing before uh, so nothing really out of the ordinary uh, just sort of having to deal with it for now which this crew that's currently here has weathered many storms uh, so you know it's nothing new to work a little harder to get the job done placing these ramekins basically as a placeholder for the filling that goes into the danish so the pastry rises around uh, the ramekins uh, and then basically at the end of the bake, you can just remove the ramekins and fill the pastry. Uh, it's just kind of the trick that we have used after years of testing different things. And I just realized I've had these in here for a little while. Fortunately, they look still very quite, quite good. So opening the store just means a layer of multitasking. So these are actually from that bake that we did late last night, but they had to be topped and prepped this morning and so now they're ready to go up here. So there's something for the people that come right when we open the doors. They won't feel as though we're totally sold out before we even started the day. Fortunately for us too, there's something forgiving about the soft opening. It's not like too heavily marketed, uh, kind of short timelines on announcements. Uh, and we're sort of intentionally trying to test the waters 
stress test ourselves and kind of the systems to you know be sure we have all of our ducks in a row before doing this every single day in some ways it gets easier because it's more rhythmic but uh, there's a lot a lot of new things that we have to master you know, we put out this like sourdough croissant start to finish video a long time ago and then we've put out other videos about our croissant making process you've seen little bits and pieces from even the more recent butter preparation video to uh, kind of the the ones you'd expect like videos on lamination uh, but this is another piece of the process and that's like pre-bake post-bake uh, rituals there's a whole series of toppings prepped here and uh, sorted and depending on the pastry and the variety we're either doing something to it before or after it's baked in order to prep and sometimes both before and after you think about it like there's as much little steps that are detailed and involved here as you might find in a in a kitchen um, during like a during food service um, you know in the back kitchen these are also interesting and technical elements uh, that we don't we haven't touched on a whole lot mainly because of my typical distance from uh, this workflow uh, you know we have a lot of people that do different things around here and uh, you'll probably see more of this now because in this space most of us are just doing more variety of things are we all set then yep cool my pastry oven is very close to warm enough for uh, for this bake and then we have basically this entire rack to wheel in there it's a fairly short bake so in about 25 minutes these will come out of the oven before we're even open so even though we have singular uh, trays of each variety ready to go the rest will join basically minutes after we open uh, so I'm gonna let this thing uh, finish warming up and we need to get the bread bake started so Emerald let's go ahead and jump on the deck oven uh, uh, anything you want to start with we'll throw in the four trays of English muffins at the let's get a rack of English muffins actually kind of a rack of everything all right <laughs> probably need to score a deck of baguettes yep uh, deck of specials deck of specials yeah we can do a half and half like fruit and nut and uh, olive in a deck and then a sourdough deck so I'm gonna grab um, just four English muffins from here okay and then we can wheel a whole nother rack you can pass me whatever I need to load I think when we get out there we should just focus on scoring both of us directly on the loader for a minute to get everything loaded up for the first round sounds good and then we'll kind of go back to our regular so do you want two trays of baguettes then? To fill the oven, yeah. So that, I think that's two trays. And it's gonna be a little bit tight up here today, but we'll figure it out. First thing in the oven. Make sure all this is set up correctly. Based on my recent results, going conservative timer on that first flip so I don't get too dark. Definitely been a struggle of mine recently, but what can you do? Moving on to green olive bowls. Oh, uh, Dylan and I had decided on scoring patterns for the olive and the fruit and nut. Okay, what do we got? Uh, O's for the olive and X's for the fruit and nut. We've recently moved all of our special loaves, like the olive, the fruit and nut, and whatever else we choose to do in the upcoming uh, periods to the bowl form, a smaller 500 gram uh, loaf. We think it's a little bit more approachable uh, for most people who maybe really want one of these specialty loaves, but maybe don't want uh, quite as much of it and want also regular sourdough. Okay, that's our pastry oven, meaning load up the pastry as soon as I... 
actually, can you wheel the pastry in there? Yeah, and then you just hit start, right? Uh, hit the green button and then start one time. And be patient with it. Okay, start, green button, or is it the other way around? It's powering up, it's very Star Trek-like. Later today, we're gonna start baking off for the farmer's markets because today is our big farmer's market push. So as the day progresses, we'll start uh, baking off sliced bread, uh, which uh, needs time to cool off uh, through the day so that it can go through the slicing room later on and go through packaging before tomorrow. Um, and then late tonight, we uh, bake for, uh, for the markets and for the whole products. So I'm gonna release the steam now uh, into the chamber of the oven before I actually load the bread. Uh, something that I've been playing with recently. Being able to see the leak at the bottom of the oven kind of let me see how I'm doing with steam dispensing in particular. So I've been running little like A-B tests. And I like, the, there's a baker that I once got to bake with uh, at a grain gathering that uh, did it this way and uh, really a baker that I respect a lot. So uh, just giving it a go. Basically throwing steam in right before I load the oven and then throwing the other bit of steam in right after uh, I load the second uh, half of the oven. And the reasoning basically in loading this way is you're loading the, the loaves directly into the steam but it's already been dispensed so you're not drenching the uh, loaves with that initial burst of steam which is kind of the strongest burst of steam. That secondary steaming that you do it's pulling from the same reservoir of basically accumulated uh, steam, which is boiling during the course of the bake. So there's only a certain amount of seconds available of steam at, in the oven at any given time. So if you dispense early, you're dispensing that big burst, uh, apparently not drenching your loaves, but then uh, following up with some more steam to kind of round it out as you're opening the door that second time. So it's allegedly uh, more gentle. The one other time in my life that I've baked on an oven with a loader like this and a steam injector like this was at that grain gathering. So giving it a go. Scoring baguettes is a little bit tricky. I feel like everybody that's ever scored baguettes with us has struggled for a little while. Luke, can I show you kind of the setup? It's gonna be a little bit tight in here, but basically you got a couple sinks. This one I would recommend using very gently right now. Okay. The drainage plumbing is still very questionable. Um, got a little work to do there. Uh, there's outlets all over the place. You've got some on top and a couple on the bottom. Uh, you've got access to our water here okay. if that does the trick. I don't, I don't know if it yeah, does. I brought a few more jugs of water. Cool. Sounds good. Um, and we got some mugs. Very nice. So, uh, Anybody want to drink it here? I like that. And then we've got some plates as well. Basically, Lindy is going to be working up here. We're thinking to put the POS over there today. So people walk in the door, they'll immediately be able to kind of place their order right here in this corner. That will include like potentially a coffee order and a bread and pastry order. Um, Lindy will be working around you and you can set up however you like. I, in, a, in a perfect world, you'd utilize kind of this space for yeah, making coffee. Um, and so you'll be aware of whatever's being ordered. You'll probably pass completed orders either to the end here if people are waiting to go or uh, to this fold-up table right here uh, if people are uh, staying here. Yeah, we like the idea of people progressing down, paying at the end, being able to turn around, use the condiment bar, and then they can either go sit or 
you know, uh, go to go if that's what they're doing. Um, so that's kind of the, the deal. Uh, we will consume as much of the other space as we can. So we will give up as much of the space as we need to. We need to give up any of the table space. Oh, so I'm gonna go the same thing. Do the steam five seconds ahead of time. Let it finish, load it in. After we load this side, we'll basically resume our regular routine of you scoring. Okay. Sense of urgency will be gone. So now we'll have a little bit of everything in the oven. Uh, we'll have one more deck to load, but we can kind of resume our more preferred way of doing things. So I'm starting to load them up on boards then? Yep. Cool. Already has something else to do. Uh, as I was loading, the timer on the English muffins went off. Here's the bench name. Thank you. I also need mitts over here at some point, a pair. See how we did on these muffins today. Pretty happy with that color. Sucks when they don't want to lift. We didn't really have that lifting problem in the other bakery. I don't know why we now do. Got a chance to go to the store yesterday and on my mind was this annoying issue of flipping English muffins and not having enough, not having it's the right tool for the job. Bench knives are fine, but mini spatula. Gotta be careful when these sheet trays are hot. It's nothing quite like a sheet pan burn. And for everybody who's watching that works in a kitchen, pretty much everybody who works in a kitchen has at some point in their life gotten burned by a sheet pan. It's the worst. Love it when they flip like this. You really only have like fractions of a second to make contact with them. That's the trick in how you're not burning your fingers. So when they don't flip, it's really unfortunate. Kind of disturbs the whole flow. Really good color on this. I don't think you could really get any better on a flat top. And that's the whole thing about English muffins. Part of it is like just getting the right texture and mimicking their traditional, I guess you could call it a cooking style because they're traditionally made on a flat top and flipped. Way prefer this workflow to a flat top. We just released steam from one of the decks uh, that that second to last deck. It's got green olive loaves on the one side and fruit and nut bowls on the other side. Uh, they look like they're having a beautiful bake in there. It'll come out pretty soon. Give pastries a quick check. Pastry bake is going quite well. You can see that the sourdough croissants are basically just about almost touching the bottom of the cheat tray that's right on top of them. Not quite, just about. It's like an indicator that we got it right on size. And what I really want to do actually right now is take out those danishes. So one of the places that we've been struggling when we're not careful is taking that danish bake too long. There's like a really fine line here where uh, if you stop this too early, the pastry will collapse. Uh, it doesn't have enough structure and it'll just collapse. The moment it loses heat, just boom. Uh, you go from beautiful looking pastries to pancakes. But if you take it too long, the danishes get too much color. And when you have to rebake the stuff that we're putting in them, well, now you've gone over time uh, because you got to get that to a certain temperature for it to set. So very, very tricky to watch for color and figure out the right timing at which point I can pause this and grab the trays that just have danishes on them uh, to pause their particular bake. And there's three of them uh, right now, so I have to be mindful of that. Uh, six minutes left on this timer, probably gonna go another two or three and then, uh, and then pull the trigger on that. Emerald is scoring bread for that final deck that hasn't been loaded in the bread oven right, right now. So she's got six of 24 and she's working on, well actually now she's got 12 of 24. 
so we're halfway to being able to load that, that deck. Um, so always something going on. Green olive bulls. These are definitely a crowd favorite in our community here. Uh, we use the local olives from our uh, olive mill uh, in town. And uh, for, for people that love olives, it's a really nice loaf. Even for people that don't like olives that much, it's a great intro to olive. Literally putting them right out for sale is kind of nice. Really nice bake on the cranberry walnut bulls. Also getting to put these guys straight out to sell. Once I load this deck, I'd like to add coffee to our POS. Somewhere over here on this glass, can we put coffee um, for $4 and put free refills? About ready to get baguettes out of the oven. And then just about everything will be ready for people as they come in. I've got pastries I need to top. Uh, and then we even have every, everything in the pastry category. We officially beat the crowds, which is great. Uh, right now we're setting kind of our target opening well ahead of when there's a lot of traffic down here in the morning. It's kind of a tricky oven to stop mid-bake because it doesn't stop right away. It's rotating and it's got to drop the rack. Our previous one like rotated with the wheels on the ground, which I don't think is very good because it creates more friction. Um, this one uh, lifts the rack up off the ground, but you have to wait the time for it to set the rack down, down when you stop the bake. Make this quick. So I'm basically restarting them now and hoping that they get a nice burst of heat at the right moment in time since I just took all of uh, these out. Now I can get rid of these ramekins and top these, but I'm gonna wait to do that until I unload those English muffins. All right, John, and I'm opening the door. We're four minutes after. Okay. This is the third or fourth soft opening I've been a part of. I'm not sure, but uh, we learn a little something different each time, new things that we need, um, ways to make our flow more efficient. Um, we got new ideas for the table setup because we're finding that um, mimicking our market displays doesn't exactly translate into this setting. Uh, whereas the market, we have like overflowing mountains and piles of pastry, um, but we're kind of noticing it doesn't really look uh, as nice in here as it does at the farmer's market. So we're going for a different display this time. John and I have done a pretty good job at the baking flow. Um, yeah, and the people who've been coming in have been really nice, really great to us. Um, everybody seems to be just as excited, if not more excited than we are to finally be doing this. It's a long time coming. We've been in and out of this space and talking about this space uh, for quite a while now. So it's nice to see everything finally coming together. It's been a while since I've done decorative scoring. While I know the motions, I've kind of forgotten about a lot of the patterns I used to do. I had to go scrolling through my camera roll and be like, oh yeah, that's something I used to do. Let me try that. After scoring, I don't know, thousands, tens of thousands of loaves probably. It's not something I really have to think about, but just kind of know intuitively. Um, as I'm scoring, I'm going relatively quickly, but I am keeping close attention to uh, the depth and the length of each cut. Um, for example, with this one here, um, you can see I'm alternating between de going deep and long and short and shallow. And so these ones will open up much more than these other ones. And so there'll be this nice alternating contrast. Um, and then the fact that these cuts are so close together will also come into play and uh, behave differently than if I were to be just doing deep cuts, but um, skipping these smaller ones in between and just going with the deep ones, they would open up much wider and bloom in a different way. Um, so just all those little factors can really make a stark difference in the final, final outcome. So I have a lot of fun with stuff like that um, because, you know, I'm scoring wheat stalks over and over. It's the 
one that's the quickest, easiest to do. Also, it's just elegant. It's the classic, it looks nice. And so for my sake, really, I don't know how much other people care about the variations in wheat stocks, but um, you know, I get bored of the same thing all the time. I have to play it up for my own sake. And I do know people appreciate it too. Um, I've gotten comments from people saying they really like how every time they get a loaf, even if it's a wheat stock, it always looks different, whether it be the pattern or just something else I'm playing with. Um, and so I'm really just playing off of the tension that's built up in the loaf from every step of the process to really bring out different artistic variations in them. I like to highlight some of the vendors that we have next door at Main Street Harvest. And so when Steadfast brings out the carrots, I'll do carrots or beets or um, whatever else. Some, some produce doesn't translate into this style. Like I tried to do celery once, it didn't really look like anything. <laughs> but I'm a, I'm a fan of the, the carrot that's uh, made its way into one of my year round scoring patterns. And then, you know, I'll bust it out when carrots are available in like, you know, Easter time, so. And then it's fall, so I'm bringing out the leaves again, even though that doesn't really mean anything here. Uh, <laughs> as far as like, you know, fall leaves go, we don't have that as much, um, but the sun, We've got a lot of that all the time. So I like to do some bright, cheery ones. My hearts are a classic. Um, there's a lot of people who come in here uh, who found out us about us through YouTube, and they tend to like these ones that say proof on it. Um, I also have proof stencils that I've made. Uh, I think they have been left at the garage. Um, I don't trust that they will be careered here anytime soon, so I'm probably just going to make more, make new stencils. Um, new things for people to play around with. Like this is really the first time we've ever done this kind of service. So, I think um, layering in the other offerings, like um, if we had that like condiment table, and give people the option of of like adding a flavored creamer if, the, if that's their thing, that'll attract its own crowd. The bread feels great coming out of the baskets. It's uh, I think my favorite thing about this new bakery so far is the temperature control in the walk-in is so consistent and the bread feels great. It goes in feeling great, comes out feeling great. Love that. One of my biggest gripes is bread that comes out a little too warm and a little too proofed. Um, not, to, not to the point where it doesn't still make good bread, but to the point where I can't draw on the bread because it'll collapse if I do too much with it. So, especially if I've had like a scoring idea floating around my head and Fridays is really when I get to score a ton of loaves and play around. And then once that comes and then the bread doesn't feel good, I'm not happy. I don't have any particular new ideas today. I'm still just kind of getting used to being back in the swing of things, getting on my blade control. I'm slowly able to build my speed back up which is a crowd pleaser. People have been watching me from behind the glass, scoring really fast in amazement. And I'm just like, oh God, please don't let me cut myself this time in front of people. <laughs> Maybe that's the other difference. I don't, I don't mind so much that people are watching. It doesn't bother me or give me like performance anxiety or anything. I'm just nervous about injuring myself in front of people. This is it, yeah? Are we, do we have more? I will double check. I mean, if it's, if it is, do you want to go to Fruit and Nut and all that, or do you want to wait? 
I'd say yeah, we can yeah. we can do another round. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll double check to see that this is it or not. I think there's like one rack left. But that might be the flag. So far today we've made quite a bit of bread. We have a ton up here in the front. Uh, an entire rack here of English muffins. Another one of these full, every single level full and side stacked. So three rows deep and then all the loaves basically put up on their side to fit more. So it's, uh, I think it's somewhere in the 300s of loaves that we've baked off so far today. Uh, sort of lost count, but uh, we're getting kind of close to the end of the morning bake now. Um, everything else that we bake ahead of market is baked uh, really in the evening right before it goes on the truck. But all the bread that we've baked so far is our most popular version of Saturday bread, which is the pre-sliced uh, artisan sourdough loaves. We, we just have a lot of those go out on Saturday morning. So they get baked in the morning uh, the day before so they have all day to cool. Uh, you know, six, seven hours before they hit the slicer. They hit the slicer, uh, it's several hours of slicing for that much bread with a whole team actually. Uh, and then basically it just joins the fresh uh, whole bread that's getting baked in that moment right ahead of being loaded on the truck. Getting close to the end of that bake, uh, Emerald's checking to see what's back there still for this AM round. Uh, we're hoping to get at least one more uh, oven's worth might be up to a whole rack's worth. We'll see what she's willing up right now. Today has been a um, rough day as far as burns. Uh, got this tag and this, and I think both of them were on sheet pans. So it was, in, in both cases, it was dealing with these uh, muffins, uh, which uh, sometimes we have trouble flipping them. And once we have trouble flipping them, why well, use this little tool to you know, flip them, but then that, that in turn is moving the sheet trays around and, you know, all of a sudden you're touching a sheet tray for a second and you've got this like stripe on your hand. Uh, and it's kind of like a, it's like getting a really, really bad sunburn, but in one spot. But like one of those really bad sunburns that the whole time you kind of feel that it's there, except in one spot. I'm pretty sure this is a second degree burn right there in, in that one spot. So don't become a bread baker if you can't handle some burns. Although I really haven't been working at the oven that much. Like in the big scheme of things, I spend more time in dough production than at the oven proportionally. So don't really get burned back there. Just mostly get dough, you know, all over. Uh, this is the last one and then it's fruit nut, olive and baguette. All right. So we'll just do this one and call it a day. Okay. Gonna load up the top deck now. It's feeling pretty nice now that uh, we've been baking in here for a uh, number of weeks. And, you know, at this point, I think this is, I don't know, like probably our sixth or seventh Friday uh, that we're working in here. And the first one where there's people in here the whole time that we're doing this bake. We had people in here on Friday already, but it was after this particular bake completed. Uh, and so it's been really nice to see it all kind of come together piece by piece. Every single week there being some, you know, measure of a test, uh, even when I was sort of inefficiently scoring on the boards as a solo baker you know, without Emerald on that one uh, particular day. Each particular test had a purpose, and so now, you know, we can kind of put the puzzle pieces together, despite feeling like today is still just another one of those tests. You know, we um, did the coffee service thing today, and I mean, we were doing some fundamental planning up until yesterday, so some things are still kind of happening really well on the fly. Uh, yesterday I had like a brief window of time to go to a uh, supply house that carried like mugs and plateware. And so it's like picking that stuff up, you know, a day before this whole thing started. So every week that goes by, we're pushing into a new sort of territory. 
Uh, now it's kind of the middle of the morning here and we're transitioning to baking off focaccia in the oven for lunch. So we're kind of layering what does it mean to actually be a retail bakery that's open throughout the day versus what does it mean to also be a distribution bakery that's getting ready for the next event that we're going to. Uh, so uh, feeling good overall. Uh, I think it's, you know, we have a lot of work to do and that's kind of a given. That was always an ex expectation that the first few months in here would be, you know, constant change and constant evolution forward uh, in capability. So every week we're sort of ramping up the capabilities and we're also having to keep up on the um, equipment side and the supply side. So we have already seemingly doubled the amount of Bannetons that we own since moving here, uh, mainly because we have bigger mixers and bigger equipment and so we can make more bread at a time. You know, we're just um, kind of slowly in this ramp up phase of ramping from being a garage bakery to being a Main Street bakery. And we'll see how long. I, I imagine we're gonna be in that phase for quite some time. Uh, even well after it's sort of noticeable to people coming in here. It's exciting though. It uh, sort of feels like having a whole new business on top of our old one where we're still thinking about our core business, our markets. You know, we're going into the winter season. We're thinking about the special events. We're layering our schedule. We're working into December right now on planning on that end. But then whatever happens in here is a whole new set of challenges that we've really never faced before. We're still going to make bread for the holiday season at the markets. And so we expect that we're still going to make, you know, a similar amount to what we're used to for the holiday season. What will the holiday season look like in here? We have no idea. So it'll be interesting to see. This ratatouille one is my favorite. I've been eating one every day. Okay, one of each Danish. Anything else for you? Still getting used to this oven, getting in the hang of it. I am trying to be extra cost cautious because yesterday I squashed a few loaves by not having the belt positioned in the right way when I'm loading which ultimately ended up being fine because they were just test loaves, but still hurt my feelings to destroy perfectly beautiful loaves at the very last second, but it ended up, ended up just being our snack. So I guess no harm, no foul. We got a loaf of bread here that was in the very back of the oven, uh, a little darker than most would choose. I'm actually gonna put this loaf out for samples just so that people can overcome their hatred of, uh, of the dark crust. Um, it's a great, great one to sample. And watch how, watch what's magic. This, I'm gonna cut it open and all of a sudden it's gonna be just as light on the inside <laughs> as all the other loaves of bread. Still warm. A lot of people would say the bread is still curing. Um, it's not like fully set yet. It's fully gelatinized. It's not going to go anywhere, but you can still see that the, that the dough is a little like moist. So I would say I would take the burnt piece of moist and warm sourdough any day over your golden brown 
Wonder Bread slice that's been around for three months and still magically okay. You can, we set this aside like on the cooling rack because you know we get complaints for sending this type of loaf out into the world, but it is still really good bread. This loaf of bread is just flour, water, and salt. The, it's leavened with a sourdough starter, which is fed with flour and water primarily. So it's flour, water, salt, and microbes in this bread. But that also means that it's probably gonna go moldy eventually. And where a lot of people find the preservatives and the long shelf life to be a point of appeal, uh, we find the fact that it will mold to be a feature, uh, not a curse, because I guess the way I would put it is it, if, if the mold won't eat what you want to eat, should you be eating it? You know, this bread's got nothing in it that will preserve it from the mold. Um, and and it, I think it's because, you know, it's a living food all the way until it's, until it's baked. Uh, so we, uh, we really enjoy it. It's not something we're upset about. If anybody wants to be very daring and try a sample of dark bread that uh, you'd, you'd probably, if I gave it to you in your delivery order, you'd probably want, want your money back because the, the crust is like charred. Those two loaves got stuck in the back of the oven and we take these loaves home for ourselves all the time and enjoy them. The Pan Chocolat is a really great choice just if you're gonna try something we make that you wanna try, because it's a craft chocolate made here locally uh, by one of our vendors in the grocery store next door. Uh, really beautiful chocolate. If you want something that's unique to this season and time, it's these two. Uh, these are Northern Arizona peaches and plums uh, in this peach plum Danish. And these are Northern Arizona uh, veggies in this uh, ratatouille Danish. It's like a pizza in a pastry. Everything's good, but as far as kind of the everyday classics, it's the almond croissant and the chocolate croissant. Uh, the morning bun is the best seller though, if you like something a little sweeter. I love it. It's, our, it's a current special, it's like a test. And you can actually try one. I have a piece right here. If you try one of these end pieces, those are the hatch chili bread. Mm -hmm. So as far as like a range of sweetness, this is the sweetest. These are not that sweet because it's dark chocolate. The almond's a little sweeter. Uh, not really, no. So like a sourdough croissant, the base sourdough croissant, there's eight grams of sugar in the dough. Uh, so sugar's not really, uh, we don't bake very sweet. Now we're actually kind of ahead of the game a little bit. Uh, I dropped these two decks because we're kind of getting to the end uh, here. So I'll pull this middle one probably right about at the time that Emerald comfortably finishes scoring the next two boards. Uh, meanwhile, by the time we get to the last set there, uh, this top deck will be getting close. So uh, just decided like a three deck rhythm is a nice little wind down. I'm looking forward to being done with this bake because I can sit and have a pastry. I've been watching people come in, get a coffee, get a pastry, sit down, hang out, and I kind of want to experience it myself. So. Uh, that'll just a few more, few more minutes. Uh, Got to get this uh, oven loaded, and then uh, my Friday sort of gets into a wind down mode. I uh, have started. Uh, my alarm went off at 2:30 in the morning. Uh, here we are, kind of lunchtime. Uh, it's weird, but you know I've worked a full day. I'm used to like just going straight into a second shift on Fridays. Uh, and prior to that, it was a third shift and even a fourth shift on Saturday morning all in a row. Uh, but we're trying to get to the point now that we achieve balance this year. So, you know, at this point, there, there's a rotation that happens in our staffing. Uh, you know, the likes of Logan come in to um, uh, work with Dylan and take over for the PM. Uh, even more folks come in later on uh, as we get into our PM pastry bake. Um, meanwhile, I can get some rest because in the Saturday morning routine, I am the first one up on the truck loading up and carting everything to market. 
getting everything out to the four markets and then coming back here and taking this station uh, to do the, again, the sliced bake in the morning. Uh, our next step is that next week we'll be opening up Saturday for the first time, which will be interesting in and of itself because even though there's not a whole lot going on in the bakery typically on Saturday, we are everywhere. So our whole staff is spread around the city. So just adding another location of being open uh, is a challenge in and of itself. Getting to the point that we add the coffee service and all that, that's where we need another month probably to get this all going so that what we're doing today can be an everyday thing. Uh, it takes a little bit of a different energy when it's every single day. Uh, so anyway, little by little it's working out though. <laughs>